After 25 years of work, I retired early at age 44 in May 2005. The first six months of retirement were great, I absolutely loved every minute of it. There were still a few weeks of term time left so I got to spend some time with my seven year old son. I used to take him to school, pick him up at night and I also got an opportunity to watch him play cricket. I used the few weeks leading up to the end of term to plan our holidays for the next month or two and we went off to some pretty exotic places. We had a couple of weeks in Portugal, we got two weeks on a cruise ship. The summer just absolutely flew by, I never gave work a second thought. Then my son went back to school, the weather was still good, it was September, I played a bit of golf, I went out on walks, life was good. More holidays were planned for the Christmas break, we jumped on another cruise ship to the Caribbean and celebrated Christmas and New Year in style. But everything changed in January. It suddenly dawned on me that after 25 years of work I hadn't made one single friend. And not just that, I'd been so immersed in my business that I neglected the friends that I had made from my school days. The harsh reality of being at the top of a business that you own, even if it's a small business like the one I had, is that everybody else there is an employee. They're not your friends, they're not your family, and they won't stay in touch with you once you've quit work. There is no reason for them to stay in touch with you. You are responsible for their salaries, you're responsible for their promotions. To some extent, you could argue that you've got their life in your hands, and when they no longer work for you, you are nothing to them. And that is the harsh reality that I found myself in when I retired early and the honeymoon period of early retirement had come to an end after about six months. This reality actually hit me quite hard. I thought some of them might stay in touch, but I was obviously deluding myself. Although I did hear from some of them from time to time when they wanted a reference or they were looking to borrow money because they were starting a business, that sort of thing, but not because they wanted to spend any time with me particularly. For a while, I would say about four or five months, I sunk into a bit of a depression. I'm not sure if I was clinically depressed, probably not, but I certainly felt gloomy. The crap winter weather in the UK doesn't help. The few hobbies that I did have were fair weather hobbies, they weren't much use in the winter. But as the anniversary of my early retirement approached, I knew I really needed to do something about it. I'd lost touch with my school friends and I didn't have any friends from work, so I needed some new friends. At first I accepted invitations from people who in reality weren't the type of friends that I was really after, but I was lonely. I was missing the human interaction of work. So I started to hang around with people and got dragged into a few hobbies that weren't really my kind of hobbies. Golf, cricket, rugby, that kind of thing. But I also made an effort to reach out to people in the business community and I started to make new friends. But I could have saved myself a lot of pain and anguish if I'd just done a little bit of planning in advance. If I could go back and talk to my 30 something self who still had about eight, nine or 10 years left in his business, I would say to that younger man, don't neglect your friends from school. Because the reality is, by the time I was 35, I had started to neglect those people. I hadn't seen some of them for years. And of course, they'd moved on. Some of them had actually stayed in touch with each other and used to go out regularly to places that I wasn't invited to with them because I, I hadn't bothered staying in touch with them. Why, why should they invite me? They used to go off once a year to places like Seville, but I never got an invite because I hadn't stayed in touch with those guys. If I could just go back and change things, I would. I would have stayed in touch with them because these were all guys that I used to hang out with in my 20s meet up with regularly. Once a year we used to gather at the local pub in the town where we went to school, the Red Lion. But I stopped going because I was too busy with my new, I was going to say friends, but they weren't really friends, with my new business acquaintances. My life became all consuming, but only in regards to my business and growing my business. So that's what I would definitely tell my younger self. Don't neglect your pals, make time for them. But I didn't and I suffered the consequences of that by the time I was in my mid 40s and sadly those relationships haven't really been repaired. I do see them from time to time but they're not people that I am particularly close to anymore and I feel sad about that. One of the biggest regrets of the dying that Bronnie Ware highlights in her book is I regret not keeping in touch with my friends. I do regret that but there's nothing I can do about it now. I have reached out to some of them over the years but the relationship can never be the same which is a bit of a shame really. So the reality is over the last 19 years I've had to make an effort to have a new set of friends. People with similar interests to me and that's worked out okay. I've now got a handful of close friends who I do hang out with on a regular basis and that has certainly solved that problem. But if you're just starting out in retirement and you're like me, you've been all consuming with your work, 
what are you going to do? How can you overcome the fact that you're retired and you've got no friends? Because I do think that you'll find that when you leave work, that the people that you're close to at work probably won't stay in touch. Or if they do, it'll be fairly infrequently. You might catch up with them for a coffee from time to time, but it'd be nothing like the relationship you had at work. Even if you don't own a business and you're not top of the tree, the chances are that your colleagues who are on the same level as you will lose touch with you. Especially if they haven't retired. They've still got to crack on and pursue their career. They've got new bosses. They've got to keep things moving along. They've got to earn a living. And spending time with you might not fit into that. It's just one of the harsh realities of life. I think if you get to the end of life and you've got a handful of friends, you've done well. But what can you do to not be lonely in retirement? Don't sit at home dwelling on it. Don't spend hours watching TV. This is an opportunity for you to get out there and be social. Maybe you might even consider staying at work. My own father was 56 when he retired. He spent 30 years as a beat bobby, a policeman. You know the type, the one with the big hats and the truncheon. 30 years on the beat in the local market town. And then he retired at 56. But he made plans for that retirement. Well in advance of that retirement, he was nurturing relationships and he actually continued to work. He spent the next 18 years before sadly passing away at 74, working for a local firm of solicitors, using his knowledge of the police to earn money and spend one or two days still at work. Now looking back, I don't think that's a bad idea at all. I didn't work at all for about four years and then I returned to work in my 50s, just part-time, one or two days a week, self-employed, business coaching, business consulting, advisory, that kind of thing. So I think my dad had it right. Use your knowledge, but don't retire completely. But you've got to make sure that you leave plenty of time for fun. And he certainly did that. Work didn't get in the way after he retired. Even though he was working one or two days a week and he got the benefits of that, he got the human interaction. And I don't know about you, but one of the things I really do miss for about quitting work is the human interaction. I do miss that. Didn't think I would, but I do. So my dad got it right, he still had that human interaction, but because he was only doing one or two days a week, he also got a lot of time to indulge his hobbies. He played golf. He also maintained a quite sizable allotment, kept us all in veg all the way through the summer and into the winter. And he got to travel a lot. My mum and dad used to go on two or three holidays every year, a couple of weeks at a time, mostly cruise ships, which they loved as much as I do. They were the ones who actually got me into it. So yeah, my dad, I think he got it right. Just the right kind of balance between work and play. The other thing that my dad did, which I think he got right, the sports that he involved himself in were very sociable. He played golf. I've never been much of a golfer. It's a game that makes me angry, but I can see the benefits of it. There's a real strong social circle around golf. I think there are other sports that are the same. These days I hear that paddle tennis and pickleball, which is all the rage I gather in America, these are sports that come with a good social circle. And my advice is to take up some sports of that kind. I didn't, and that was a big mistake of mine. However, one of the things that I did do is that I got involved in an investment club. Having retired, I wanted to make sure that the pot of money that I had was going to last. I joined a group of men, mostly. It was a group of about 20 men and a couple of women who were meeting up regularly to talk about investments and pensions and that sort of thing. And that was great. I made some good friends that way. The other thing I did more recently is that I joined a large organisation to expand my coaching knowledge. It didn't go so well in terms of expanding that knowledge but I did make some good friends so yeah there are opportunities all around you to make friends you don't have to be alone in retirement but you do have to face up to the fact that when you retire the chances are you'll probably retire with no friends at all especially if you've been all in on your career but don't give up hope that will only be a temporary thing in time you will make friends but don't expect there to ever be a large number as I said earlier if you die with only a handful of friends you've done really well so yeah that's it really in conclusion I just thought I'd make this quick video whilst I'm waiting for my car to charge it takes about 20 minutes to half an hour to charge my vehicle so I thought I'd make this video and hopefully some of these insights have helped um, if they have please leave your thoughts in the comments I'd love to hear how your retirement has gone did you retire and not have any friends and if you did what did you do anyway thanks for watching i'll see you next time